Hello everyone and welcome back to The Split Decision. I'm Elias Blanco. Each week we look at the biggest headlines and fights throughout the past week in boxing. Listen, this past week was kind of crazy. We had a big card over in Saudi Arabia and we had some crazy fight announcements. Without further ado, let's get to the fights. All right, so since last October, MMA superstar Francis Ngannou has been the talk of boxing. I mean, he gave Tyson Fury one of the toughest fights of his career in his very first professional fight. In other words, he successfully betted on himself. On Friday, he looked to shock the world again on the Knockouts Chaos card back in Saudi Arabia. But instead, he got a dose of reality, courtesy of a right hand from another heavyweight champion. Over in Saudi Arabia, Anthony Joshua made quick work of the former UFC champion, taking only two rounds to knock him out cold. The first round was slow one for the most part. That was until the end of the round when Joshua landed a hard straight right to knock Ngannou down. In the second, another knockdown spelled the beginning of the end for Ngannou, and as he was getting right up, a perfectly timed right hook sealed the deal. In this crossover fight between boxing and MMA, boxing came out on top. Also on that knockout chaos card was another important heavyweight fight. Joseph Parker survived two knockdowns to edge out the big bang, Zhile Zhang. It didn't look good for the New Zealander at first. He got rocked early in the third round. But a combination of speed, activity, and ring generalship gave Parker the majority decision. Now. Because Parker won, a rematch, a rematch clause is now activated, meaning these two will have to fight again at a later date. For Parker, since losing to Joe Joyce in 2022, he has won five straight fights in a row, with the last two wins being the best of his career. And let's take a look at the results of that knockout chaos card back on Friday. Obviously, we talked about it. Anthony Joshua knocked out Francis Ngannou cold in the second round. Joseph Parker overcame two knockdowns and beat Zhilei Zhang to become the WBO interim heavyweight title holder. Ray Vargas and Nick Ball fought to a split draw. This one was kind of controversial because it looked like Ray Vargas was winning the first half, but then a couple of knockdowns towards the second half of the fight looked like Ball edged the fight. Will we get a rematch soon? We'll see. Israel Madronov is a killer at 154. He is now the new WBA super welterweight champion after stopping Magomed Kurbanov in the fifth round. That fight was one-sided. He, he controlled the pace of that fight. He controlled where it was going. I think we have a new top 154 pounder in that division. So again, it was an unfortunate result for Francis Ngannou. From the performance of his life against Tyson Fury to looking like a novice against Anthony Joshua, the result is not what he wanted. But there's still a bright side to it. One, he made $20 million. I'd get knocked out for a payday like that any day. And two, he arguably faced two of the biggest faces in heavyweight boxing in his first two fights. That in and of itself is unheard of. And hey, he is still the lineal heavyweight champion in MMA and has plenty of opportunities waiting for him in the PFL. Not only that, but there's still an opportunity to make one more super fight in boxing against one Deontay Wilder. So although he was on the wrong end of a highlight reel knockout, this is not the end of Francis Ngannou in boxing. As for Anthony Joshua, we will talk about him later. All right, let's take a look at some other notable fights that happened last week. Over in Canada last Thursday, Stephen Butler Steamroll through Steve Rolls in 60 seconds. Listen, Stephen Butler is exciting. I didn't think he had punching power like that. I know he had a, a high knockout ratio, but I didn't know he was packing hands like that. I think if he has another one like that, he could be the face of Canadian boxing. On that same Canadian card, undefeated Osley's Iglesias knocked out Marcelo Croceres in the first round. A prospect just going to keep thriving, man. A prospect is just going to keep thriving. On the day of Anthony Joshua Francis Ngannou, over in Nicaragua, undefeated Spaniard Jairo Norega beat Azael Villar by unanimous decision. Again, Norega is a slick boxer. I think more opportunities are going to come to him if he just keeps winning. And then on Saturday, Kevin Lele Sajo defended his European super middleweight title against Giovanni De Corrales. And listen, heavy-handed Frenchman, I think France has a serious contender on their hands. 
All right, let's take a look at some upcoming fights happening this week. On Wednesday, over in Australia, two undefeated super bantamweights as Sam Goodman takes on Mark Schliebs. Will Sam Goodman stake his claim to a title fight against Naoya Inoue? We'll have to wait and see. On Saturday, though, over in the zone, undefeated hard-hitting puncher William Zepeda will take on the very game Maxi Hughes. This fight will be an IBF eliminator in the lightweight division. Listen, Zepeda is a hard puncher. He is one of the bright spots in that division. And Maxi Hughes, I thought he beat George Cambosis back in the summer, but you know, he didn't get the nod on that one. But listen, he could shock the world in this one if he's able to outbox Zepeda. On that same card, a final eliminator in, for the WBA in the featherweight division as Victor Morales takes on Luis Nunes. Now listen, two undefeated fighters. This has the makings of a, you know, a potential world championship fight because I think Raymond Ford possibly could be vacating that featherweight belt. So listen, if anything goes, this might be a world title fight by the end of the week. And then on Saturday as well, Nathan Heaney will face Brad Pauls for Haney's British middleweight title. Listen, I love me some British boxing. I think when it comes to regional titles, they do it the best. They Those titles mean something to them, so I'm looking forward to that. And on that same card, Joy Joyce and Zach Parker will also be in action. Love me to watch some Joe Joyce heavy-handed. And then Zach Parker, you know, ever since he was injured, you know, I've wanted him to get back on the winning track and get back in the top 10 of that super middleweight division. So again, listen, not as good as last week, but still an exciting week of fights. So I am looking forward to it. Uh, I genuinely can't believe that I'm talking about this, but Jake Paul announced his next fight and it will be this summer. To who is he fighting, you may ask? None other than Mike Tyson. On Thursday, Paul announced that he will be fighting the former heavyweight champion on July 20th on Netflix. Jake Paul, who is 27 years old at this point, has been actively boxing for the past five and a half years. As for Mike Tyson, he's 57 years old and hasn't been in the ring since his exhibition bout against 55-year-old Roy Jones Jr. back in 2020. Now. This is so random. Like, why is this fight even being made? What were the conversations like to even make this fight happen? There is a lot going through my head because this fight feels like a lose-lose situation. If Jake Paul wins, nobody's gonna care because you beat an old man. And if he loses, you look like an idiot for losing to an old man. But if Mike Tyson loses, it will break my heart. And also, it will break all boxing fans' hearts. It's something we just don't want to see. But the fight is official, and I already know it's going to do historic, even record-breaking numbers. There's a chance this may be the most viewed boxing fight ever. And unfortunately, I will be watching it. Speaking of random fights in the works, Manny Pacquiao is in talks to come out of retirement to face undefeated Brit Conor Ben. Ben, who recently failed a drug test in 2022, has won two fights in a row since. Pacquiao, on the other hand, is 45 years old and has not fought since losing to Jordanis Ugas in 2021. Oh my gosh. Now again, I don't get this fight, specifically for Conor Ben. What is fighting a retired Manny Pacquiao going to do for your world title aspirations? As of late, it seems like Ben is trying to chase the money, but he's really only a household name in the UK up to this point. And listen, welterweight is about to become a very open division, with Terence Crawford and Earl Spence Jr. leaving that division. So why take a fight that will put you off track to becoming a top 147 pounder? As for Manny Pacquiao, there's no need to come back and fight professionally. Your legacy is set, for sure. Certified Hall of Famer. Nobody will ever accomplish what you have. You're an eight division world champion. You're the lineal champion in five divisions. What is there to accomplish now at 45 years old? Okay, but as of now, we are just in the talking stage for this fight. And hopefully, it stays that way. All right, so, at this point, I am tired of talking about Canelo Alvarez, but, 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 
I am happy to say we finally have an official fight announcement. Canelo will defend his undisputed super middleweight title on May 4th against the undefeated Jaime Munguia. Now, this will be a PBC pay-per-view on Amazon Prime Video, despite the fact that Canelo and the PBC parted ways a couple weeks ago. Ladies and gentlemen, Canelo is back in action on Cinco de Mayo weekend. And for the first time since 2017, Canelo will be fighting a fellow Mexican. Alright, switching gears now, are you ready to see the monster unleashed once again? Undisputed Super Bantamweight Champion Naoya Inoue will defend his belts against Louise Neary on May 6th at the Tokyo Dome. This will be Inoue's first defense since winning all four belts back in December. This will also be the first boxing fight at the Tokyo Dome since Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson back in 1990. And on that Tokyo Dome undercard, WBO Bantamweight Champion Jason Maloney will go into enemy territory, taking on former kickboxing world champion Yoshiki Takei. Maloney will be, will be making his second defense of his belt, taking on one of the hardest hitters at 118. Takei is currently 8-0 with all his fights coming by way of knockout. And listen, following Takei's K1 career, he is no joke, so this is going to be a tough one. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the championship round where we ran about the biggest topic in boxing in the past week. And this week goes to none other than Mr. Anthony Joshua. Now, I am still trying to process what I witnessed on Friday. I mean, we have never seen Francis Ngannou out cold like that, even in MMA. What happened in that fight still doesn't feel real. But it's not like I didn't think this would happen. I mean, Anthony Joshua saw what happened to Tyson Fury when he didn't take this fight seriously. You get caught with something you're not supposed to get caught with, and people start to question your credibility at the top of the heavyweight division. Now, we just saw what happens when a boxer takes these types of crossover fights seriously, and it's not even close. There is levels to boxing, and Francis Ngannou, though he is arguably the top heavyweight in another combat sport, he's just not there yet in the sweet science. As for Anthony Joshua, though, this recent stretch he's been on is the best version I've seen of him. I mean, the man is just hitting on all cylinders, confidence, power, skill, but most importantly, intimidation. He has brought back that fear that he once had as a hard-hitting puncher. And we can thank one person for this change. And in Joshua's own words, it's the Ben Davidson effect, baby. Smooth, right? Not really. Anthony Joshua will face the winner of the Tyson Fury Alexander Usyk fight card for the undisputed heavyweight title. And if he continues to fight under the tutelage of Ben Davidson, we may just see a three time heavyweight champion be crowned. Guys, that is all the time we have for fights today. Thank you guys for watching The Split Decision. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Follow us for all the boxing news. We're going to release stuff every Monday. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Elias Blanco, and I'm out.